What's going on? It's Casey from casey-sounds.com. Today's video, I want to talk about how to set up a home studio. But before I get into that video, if you're new to my channel, I'm Casey. I'm a producer, beat maker, and mix engineer. I share videos, I upload videos on how to make beats, how to mix, how to promote your music, and just to be the best at what you do. So let's get into today's video, which is how to set up your home studio. So first of all, you're gonna need a computer, a laptop, one move, good processing power. Uh, it doesn't have to be the best. I'd say just work to your budget. If you wanna go Mac, go Mac. If you wanna go PC, go for PC, which is whatever suits you and your budget. So once you've got that, then you're gonna need a digital audio workstation, which is your door for short. That can be Reason, can be Ableton, it could be Echo Studio, Studio One, whatever software works for you. Most of these softwares, they come in a light version or they come as a demo. I would say, try a few out, see what works for you. Gosh, I forgot about Cubase. Shout out to my Cubase users. I, I, I used to use Cubase back in the days, oh my gosh, years ago. But anyway, yeah, so, Try a few demo versions, see what works for best for you. I started off uh, with Music Generator on the PlayStation. That was way before, that was in 2001. And then I went to college and someone told me about FL Studio. I started using FL Studio, that was cool. Then I jumped onto Reason. I liked, I liked them both. If I'm honest, I preferred Reason just because of how it looked with the racks and stuff like that. I thought it was really cool. Went on to start doing a like more intense studying like university and stuff like that. They was teaching us and how, teaching us through using Logic. So it just made sense for me to use Logic Pro. So I've been using that ever since. Use what suits you, whatever's best for you, whatever your favorite producer or beat maker's using, jump on that. And once you've got that, you're gonna need some sounds like VST sounds, VST, VSTs. Most of these softwares come with sounds. I'm not too sure on all of them, if I'm honest. Logic Pro comes packed with loads of sounds. Reason, obviously you've got sounds, FL Studio, yeah. So you're gonna have stock sounds, but they're good to start off with, but then you're gonna need to, you're gonna get tired of that same sound. You're gonna wanna sound like the professional. So you're gonna need VST sims like Silent, Electra X, depending on what type of music you're making as well. I mean, EDM is mostly massive, like dubstep massive. R&B is gonna be your studio linked. Again, just find what suits you. You don't have to stick to that genre. You don't have to stick to them certain sounds because of that genre. You can switch it up because you're finding your own sound. Then you're gonna need an audio interface. An audio interface is one of these, if you can see here is the Apollo Twin Duo. This is your digital to analog conversion. You don't need to go, you don't need to go all out and get the, the highest spec audio interface. I would say work towards your budget and start off small, but just build up your studio. I don't really see the point in buying the best stuff, the most expensive stuff straight away when you're just starting out, build it up gradually over time. You've got your audio interface. Now you're gonna need a MIDI keyboard. The MIDI keyboard that I'm using at the moment is the Novation Launch Key 49. If you're just starting out, maybe 25 keys would be enough for you. By having a MIDI keyboard, this, this gives you the, the ability to, to play your, your notes in. You don't have to play your notes in, you can just pencil them in if that's what you prefer to do. But with a MIDI keyboard, it allows you to trigger the sounds selected, do your research and see what, what's best for you. That's in your budget. <laughs> so that's MIDI keyboards. Moving on, you're gonna need some headphones. So if you don't want to disturb your neighbors or whoever's in your house, especially if it's a bedroom studio that you're, you're setting up, then get yourself some decent headphones. At the moment, I'm using the ATH M50s, which I've had for quite a while now, a good couple of years. I'm used to the sound of them. I like the sound of them. Um, I, I'm mixing them, I make beats in them. You, like I said before, like I keep saying, is depending on your budget, just buy a pair that suit you. And, and get used to how they sound. Bear in mind, some headphones are just gonna boost the, the low end and make everything sound a lot more basic. Check out the frequency response on your headphones or whatever you decide to use. Moving on from headphones, you're gonna need some monitors. So I'm using the KRK VXT6s. I've had those for since uh, 2008. I know what they sound like. Yeah, and I'm used to them. You can pick up some nice rockets. They're in the same family as, as the KRK, KRK VXT6s. Do your research, see what, your, what suits your budget and how you want your studio to look. Um, you can get some nice ones out there that sound good um, and just build it up. Moving on, most important thing you're gonna need to, once you set up your studio is patience. Patience is, is one of the key things because you're, you've got all this new equipment. You're gonna have to get over the learning curve of this new equipment that you bought, especially digital audio workstations. So 
number eight is probably one of the biggest things is patience so that's just my advice on what equipment you should get if you're just starting your studio starting as a beat maker and setting up your home studio if there's anything you're unsure of hit me up in the in the comments and i will do my best to help you hit me up on instagram i'm always sharing different tips and tricks that i don't put on youtube if you like the video hit the like button hit subscribe i appreciate all of that appreciate your time thank you for watching music is life peace